talk about our recent study on programming for big graph processing. So, uh, sorry, it doesn't work. So this is the summary of this talk. So the background is a uh, big demand for large scale graph processing. And Google proposed the pre-gel system that adopts vertex centric computation and showed that this approach is promising for large scale graph processing. So it has good scalability. But unfortunately, it is imperative. So we thought that functional approach in this field is worth trying. And we have developed functional DSL called Freyer. And that achieves better programmability compared to Prezier. And it can be compared to Prezier. And actually, it achieves reasonable performance. This is our uh, study. OK, now I'd like to introduce this vertex-centric computation by using quite small example. So it's a quite easy computation. And that is a reachability problem. So we want to find the vertices that are reachable from the specific vertex V0. And in general, vertex-centric computation it consists of iterative super steps. And super step, uh, a super step executes vertex computation on every vertex in parallel. So it has massive parallelism. And for this reachability problem, the vertex computation is like this. So please think as a vertex. So if I am the vertex V0, then trivially I'm reachable, that one. And also, if one of my neighbor is reachable, then I'm also reachable. This is uh, vertex-centric thinking. OK, now I'd like to demonstrate this vertex-centric computation on this small graph. And along with this demonstration, I'd like to show you the uh, concrete Prager code here. And actually, Prager uh, uses the message, message passing for interaction between vertices. So the vertex computation receives a list of messages in Prezier. OK, uh, now I'd like to demonstrate. So for the first super step, each vertex checks if it is the vertex zero or not. And it stores the result as its value, like this. So this vertex is V0, so it has true here. And others has false. And uh, yeah, this code corresponds to this one. And also, if you have true, then you send this true to your neighbors so that this neighbor knows that he has reachable neighbor. So it should send this true to its neighbors like this. And after that, every vertex do, uh, does vote to hold. This is a mechanism to uh, terminate the whole computation. So if a vertex calls was to hold, then it becomes inactive, inactive state. And if there is no message sent and there is no active vertex, then the whole computation terminates. This is the rule of termination. And here we have some messages. So the computation uh, continues. So this is the next super step. In this super step, uh, this one and this one has message. So this do computation. So now this one knows that he has a reachable neighbor. So it uh, updates its value to true by this one. And then, uh, similar to the previous super step, it sends true to its neighbor so that he can know that he has uh, reachable neighbors like this. And again, uh, these two call what to hold, but we have message, so the computation continue. And this is the, uh, actually, third super step, super step two. And then this has these messages, and it updates its value to true. And in this case, this have no outgoing neighbors, so it doesn't send uh, any message. And now we don't have messages. And they are all in the inactive mode, 
So the computation terminates. This is the vertex-centric computation. And here is the complete code implementing that uh, vertex-centric computation. But actually, we can find uh, at least two problems about programmability in this code. What is the problem? So first, because this uses the message passing uh, style, so the sending of message and use of message is separated. And this makes the program uh, difficult to be understood. So, for example, uh, what is computed here? It is uh, a difficult question. So you need to investigate the whole code to see what is the message here. This is the first problem. So the pro program is not easy to understand. And the second problem is that this termination mechanism is mixed into the main computation. So here is the question. When does it terminate? This is also a difficult question to answer. So basically, these two uh, problems we want to tackle by using the functional approach. OK, I'd like to introduce the basic ideas to solve these two problems. The first one is message pushing style, and the other is mixed termination. And for the first one, uh, instead of writing a procedure that receiving a message to update something, we ask a user to write a function that generates a new value for the given vertex. This is functional. And also, in this computation, you can uh, directly read the values of your neighbors. We want to use this style because in this style, the say lookup of data and use of data is very close in the code. So this code is very easy to read. So good probability. And also for the second problem, we want to decompose this termination from the main computation. So we use the style of this one. So the main computation repeats iteration. And outside this iteration, a terminator stops the computation. So we want to split these two. In other words, we want to make the whole computation at the composition of the main computation and termination. OK, these are two basic ideas of a functional approach. And we have implemented a functional DSL based on these ideas. That is Frager. And then I'd like to show you the concrete Frager code for a reachability problem. And first of all, I'd like to focus on the main part of the program. The main part is this step function to create the new value of each vertex. And here, uh, as I said, as the uh, idea one, you can directly uh, access the data on neighbor elements in the previous super step by using FREV table. And so to access the neighbors, you can use a comprehension notation like this. And this ISV generates the incoming neighbors. And you can use this FREV V table to access the previous value of that um, neighbor. And simply taking the disjunction of this one, you can compute the what you want. So what we want is uh, to compute, I'm reachable if one of my neighbors is reachable. This is a straightforward implementation of this uh, vertex-centric vertex -centric thinking. So it's easy to read. So this readability is uh, because of the uh, our adopted read-based access. So it makes program to see what is computed. And actually, so in the pre, uh, sorry, pre gel model, uh, the use and send of message are separated by super steps. So this makes uh, the program difficult to be understood. OK, then I'd like to show you the whole program. So 
The first one is definition of the uh, C. Data on the vertex, actually uh, every vertex has a record. And this is the main program. And mainly it has initialization function and step function. And these functions are given to the high order function called Frege. So, well, this Frege implements the second idea. So the iteration of main computation and the termination. So its image is like this. First, here is the input graph. And this Frege function first maps the initialization function, given initialization function, to this one to produce another graph. That is the first graph in this computation. And then it maps this step function to each of these vertices to generate next graph, like this. So this is functional. So there is no update but making the or reproduction of next graph. And this repeats infinitely. Basically, this is the main computation. It makes a list or infinite list of graphs that can be made by mapping this step function. And then the terminator outside of this computation extracts the final result according to the specified termination condition. In this case, fix is given as termination condition. This means that uh, we want to find the fixed point as the result. So it takes the fixed point as the final result. This is the computation model of our Frege. And since we are separating the termination from the main computation, you can easily change the termination condition to solve a variant of your, your problem. So for example, if you want to find only first 100 regions of vertices, you can write this kind of code. Basically, this code is the same as the previous one, except that it uses another uh, termination condition. This uses until, and this means that if this predicate is satisfied, then the terminator terminates the main computation. So here you can use the comprehension notation for the whole graph to count the number of reachable vertices with the summation. And if this one is greater than 100, then the computation terminates. OK, this is a functional DSL, Fregel. And it, actually, it is the first of the functional language with some graph high order functions, such as Frager in the previous slide, and map, zip, and so on. And its core computation is functionally reformulated vertex centric computation, as shown in the previous slide. So we can use read based access to neighbors. And it separates the termination from the main iteration. So this makes the program easy to be understood. And also, uh, since this provides a high order functions, so you can use these functions to make your program in the compositional way. So it supports compositional programming. And also, uh, once you write a program in Frege, the compiler can produce, uh, compile it to the existing framework, Preger. OK, now I'd like to switch to the talk about compilation. Oh, sorry. So this is the execution flow of our Frege. There are two flows. So one is to execute the Frege code on Haskell interpreter. This is a sequential execution, but uh, mainly for development and debugging, so useful for development. The other way is compilation to existing vertex centric framework. So here is the Frege comp Frege compiler. And the compilation is twofold. First, it normalizes the Frege code into normalized code. And this normalization uh, actually flattens the multiple use of graph high order functions into a single use of the core computation. And then code generator generates 
uh, some code for existing framework. And currently, our prototype implementation supports Giraffe, that is open source implementation of Prigel. Okay, here I mentioned something about the normalization. And the normalization flatters the multiple use of graph high order functions to a single use of Friegel function. And actually, this is done by making a new step function to emulate the original computation. And this emulation is done by building a state transition machine that emulates the structure of the computation. So here you can find one, two, three, four, five, six graph high order functions. And corresponding to these six use of high order functions, the state machine has six states. So the compiler pro, uh, builds this kind of uh, state transition machine and embeds this to uh, as a vertex data. And then each vertex emulates the computation of this uh, whole program. That is normalization. And finally, I'd like to show you the performance experiment. So we conducted experiment, or we measured the running time on the Amazon EC2. And uh, actually, there are three Fregel programs for shortest path problem, densest subgraph problem, and strongly connected component decomposition. And basically, uh, and also we have uh, run the handwritten code for SSSP and DS. And basically, the Fregel code achieves good scalability, similar to the handwritten code. And, but it's absolute performance is uh, not so good. So the, for the SSSP, the shortest path problem, it is, uh, it runs at 10 times slow speed, and maybe this is acceptable. And the, for density subgraph, it runs at two times slow speed. And we investigated the uh, reason of this performance down, and we found that uh, the main factor of this drawdown is the number of messages, the amount of messages. So the compiled program from Fregel uh, transmits so many messages, so this uh, slows down the execution. Okay, so if you are interested in the, these examples, uh, you can refer to the paper and the details of normalization, uh, code generation are also discussed in the paper. Okay, conclusion. So we have developed functional DSL for big graph processing, that is Fregel, and it can provide better programmability, and it supports compositional programming with graph high order functions. And it achieves reasonable performance without optimization. But we think that we need optimization for realistic use of Fregel. And we are thinking of these future works. So various optimization to reduce the redundancy is necessary. And also, we want to uh, extend the language to support, for example, changing the shape of graphs and updating the edges and so on. So these are our future work. Okay, that's it. Thank you for listening. Hi, uh, Gabriel Scherer, Northeastern. Uh, I have a question about Pregel, so the imperative one. Uh, um, it, when you, when you, you have shown us an example of code, and it looks like it's, it describes what you can do. It, it uses message passing, so it should be very good between several servers. Sorry. Uh, the, I, I wonder how the implementation of Pregel is done. Because it looks like uh, if you just interpret the code naively, uh, and you have many nodes on a single machine, it's, it should not be very efficient. So I wonder, is there, in the, compile, in the implementation of uh, Pregel, is there uh, another representation of the same program 
that is less imperative and maybe uh, could be a better target for Pregel. So you are. So your questions are about Pregel. Yes. Do you know uh, about the intermediate representations? In the, in the uh, Pregel. Sorry, I, I don't know the intermediate uh, internal of Pregel. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Ryan Newton, Indiana. I was wondering, it seems like uh, Fraggle programs are deterministic by construction. Uh, do you expose any non-deterministic operations? Are all Fraggle programs guaranteed to execute deterministically to yield the same output graph from the same input graph? So, sorry, I couldn't understand it because of my poor English. Ah, I was just asking about determinism. Uh, it's a deterministic language, Fraggle. Tra translating. Deterministic. 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 Uh, sure, sure. Yes, this is functional. deterministic. Uh, because. Sorry. So. I didn't say I was something. Where. For example, the order of neighbors is exposed in a canonical order? Actually, uh, there is no non-deterministism. So the, it's always uh, it always returns the same result for the same input. So th that was guaranteed by the feature that the message sent is available in the next super step. So this guarantees there is no uh, non-determinist, non-determinism. Hi, Jos Bertolt from Commonwealth Bank. I like very much how your approach nicely, nicely decomposes into the termination and the, mm -hmm. and, and the communication is abstracted from. However, of course, you are introducing a global view of the entire system. So quite remarkable. If, if you go forward to the example with the count of neighbors, I think. Not, so not having fix as the termination, but the other. That probably makes it most clear that you, you actually sum up over a global state. Whereas, the, if I understand correctly without un, uh, knowing uh, Pregel that much, it's a local decision to vote for termination. So, yes, so, so is, do you, do you, do you uses see the this local as, termination. Sorry? Uh, so Prezier uses the local termination strategy, mm -hmm. and this Frager uses the global termination strategy. Yes, yes. yes. I, wonder, I wonder just how much of a performance impact this will have, because obviously this limits your parallelism. And I, my actual question is, do you have, did, have you thought about uh, limiting the termination conditions to ones that could decide locally as opposed to ones that don't, because I, I did similar work previously. Well, I think we need some yeah, restriction to, uh, yes, the termination, uh, local termination is efficient, more efficient than the global termination. So we need some optimization or some uh, constraint to make the global of, uh, global termination to local termination, and this is the say, future work. <laughs> so so the, it's not easy, I think. Thank you very much.